Hello plant people, Nora here, the Lekker Queen. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel where we talk about all things indoor plants. Today we will be talking about semi-hydroponics. I am doing a series where I talk about how to grow your plants in semi-hydroponic. Straight up from what you need to start your semi-hydroponic journey all through to how you do your watering, how you clean your plants and how you maintain them long term. So today we are going to start with just the things that you need. That is all we're going to talk about. We're not mixing anything, we're not doing anything. We're just talking about list on the, of ingredients. Okay, we will start with an explanation of what hydroponics is. So hydroponics is basically growing your plants, whether it's plants to eat, plant, indoor plants, anything, growing your plants in a hydroponic environment. So in a watery environment, hydro is water, as you know. So we're growing that, we're using that to grow our plants. We're not growing our plants in soil. We're using different media, such as leka, which is lightweight expanded clay balls. You can use pond. There's all sorts of other different media that people use to grow in hydroponics. Now, there's a few terminologies. You've got hydroponics, you've got semi-hydroponics, you've got passive hydroponics. There's all sorts of things that can actually confuse someone if you're starting out in the hydroponics game. So generally, full hydroponics is where you've got um, a motor or something like that that's actually moving the solution in the tanks. So there's all sorts of things that go into full hydroponics and that's definitely not what we're doing here. I do not have a full hydroponics setup in my house. That's probably something I might explore later down the track, maybe when my kids are grown and not living in my house anymore and I've got a bigger disposable income. But for now, we're sticking to semi-hydroponics. So what is semi-hydroponics? So of course the word semi means half. So you're kind of going half and half. You're not going the whole hog where you're, you know, you've got pumps, you've got meters and you're measuring all sorts of things. That's, that's full, we're not doing that. We're doing semi, we're just doing halfway. So we've, in semi-hydroponics, you've got your plants living in leka or pond or whatever medium you're using and they are living in a cash pot where they are deriving nutrition or they're deriving that nutrient solution in a pot, right? And semi-hydroponics is pretty much the same thing as passive hydroponics because passive, it's, passive is the opposite of the word active. So when you, something is active, it's got a motion to it, it's got a movement to it. Passive is nothing is happening. So in proper full-blown hydroponics, that nutrient solution is moving, it's in constant motion. In passive or semi-hydroponic solution, that nutrient solution is not moving, it's not active, it's passive. And you've got that nutrient solution living in a cash pot. So it just sits there, the plant sits there, everything is sitting there, nothing is happening. Semi-hydroponics, passive hydroponics, or growing your plants in lecker. So for the purposes of my video and for the purposes of my practice, I use Lekka as my growing medium. So going forward, I will be talking about Lekka. You might use something else or you might have known other people to use something else. Same thing, different growing medium, we're just using Lekka. So let's talk about pots. A lot of people get concerned about um, moving your plants from soil to semi-hydroponics because they feel they need to use different pots. So I will show you the pots that I use. So I use this. I like to use a clear pot because I like to see what's happening with my plants. I like to look at their roots and the only way I can do that is if the pot is clear. I do have other pots. For example, there's this pot. This is not a clear pot. This is, you know, a black pot. But I won't be able to see what's happening with the roots in this pot. And the whole point for me of using semi-hydroponics is I can see my roots and if I need to intervene and do something I can do that immediately. So this pot I tend not to use a lot but I re I like the only reason I have it is because it's tiny and sometimes when I'm wanting to pot up a very small plant this is all I've got so I use that. But the, the pots that I really like to use are these clear pots and then 
I like to have the pots to have a lot of ventilation in them. So there's nothing special about these pots. These are just the normal nursery pots that you will get in any garden center, hardware store, anywhere. So they've got holes at the bottom and I make these holes around there just to provide added ventilation for my roots. If you haven't seen my video that shows how I make these DIY, I call them DIY net pots, check out the link above and that'll take you straight to the video that shows you how I make my DIY net pots. And the description also shows where I get everything that I use to make my DIY net pots. So a DIY net pot is absolutely essential but this is not a special pot. It's just a normal pot that you would get to pot up your plants in soil and that's it. And if you don't have a clear pot, that doesn't really matter either. You can use anything you've got at your disposal. I just prefer the clear pots because it makes things easier for me. Now, let's talk about cash pots. So in my practice, I get my clear pot and I put it in my cash pot. This is what I call a cash pot that sits in there. That is my semi-hydroponic setup. This is a cash pot, okay? And again, with my cash pots, this is also a cash pot. A cash pot is anything that you can put your plant in, okay? And what I use, these are like, these are empty food containers, these are pot liners, and all I do is cover them up with some black tape to prevent algae from growing. I've got a video where I talk about algae in semi-hydroponics. If you haven't seen it, click on the link above and that will take you straight to it because algae can be problematic when you're growing in a semi-hydroponic setup. And if you use the method that I'm talking about, you, prob you that's not going to be an issue for you. There's another way, instead of using those cash pots where you're covering up with tape, you can use this kind of setup. So this is my peace lily and it's living in a ceramic pot. I will pick that up and pull it out so you can see the plant. The plant is actually living in one of these pots. That's the plant there, right? And you can see the nutrient solution dripping off there. Those are the plant roots there. This is my peace lily. It's really, really happy. And look at how, you know, you know how peace lilies tend to get a lot of dark spots and they're very sensitive to overwatering. Look at how this peace lily is loving life in semi-hydroponics. It's, it's, it's really interesting. So I've got this, my peace lily, living in this ceramic pot. So this ceramic pot is what's acting as my cash pot. So this ceramic pot does not have a hole at the bottom. I will tip this out. So I can show you this pot. So this is what this pot looks like. This pot actually has a little rubber stopper in it, which is really good. So um, it can act as two things. So if you've got a plant living in soil, you can just take that little stopper out. But if you've got a plant living in semi-hydroponics, you put that on and that becomes a lovely cash pot. And you just fill that with your nutrient solution. And um, because it's opaque, light doesn't go through and you don't have algae growing in your setup. So that's another way of doing things. That is my plant living in its cash pot. Very, very happy. So of course, uh, the other thing that you need to grow in a semi-hydroponic setup is a medium. And as I explained, in my practice, I use LECA, which is lightweight, um, expanded clay aggregate. They're basically clay balls. So this is Lekka and these are clay balls. That is all that they are. They are clay balls. So the, the clay has been heated to a very, very, very high temperature, put in a watery kiln and turned around and around and around. And that's how come you get that shape, that round shape to the balls. So there's, there's different kinds of like that, different forms, depending on who makes it. Oh, let's see if I can pick that up nicely. So, you know, you can have Lekka that looks like that. You can have Lekka that looks like that. And um, yes, that is what your plant will sit in. That is what is acting as your soil, okay? 
The thing to remember about Lekka is that Lekka has zero nutritional value, zero. If you put your plant in Lekka and just give it water, it will eventually die because the Lekka has got no nutrients. So the thing about semi-hydroponics is that you need to provide nutrients to your plants. You need a nutrient solution, okay? So these are the nutrient solution that I use. I use a growth technology Clonex clone solution and I use growth technology foliage focus. These are the main things that I use for my plants. When do I use what? I use Growth Technology Clonex Clone Solution when I'm making cuttings. It helps the plants, it feeds the cuttings and helps them develop the roots quicker. That is when I use this. I also use it when I'm doing transfers from, if I'm moving a plant from soil to lecker, I like to put Clonex Clone Solution in the reservoir. So I will put a solution of this in that reservoir and put the plant in. And that also helps the plant to develop lecker roots quickly, but it also helps the plant with shock. So you can imagine a plant's been moved from soil to lecker. That's a very, very big transition. So using this helps with that process. I will continue to use the Clonex clone solution until there is an adequate amount of lecker roots that have developed and then I will switch over to foliage focus. Foliage focus is what I use for long-term maintenance of my plant, okay? There are other things that you can add to your nutrient solution. So you can add something that will add helpful bacteria. So I use something like that. Growth Technology also have a product called Root Zone. I use that a lot as well. But really, those are just additions. I mean, you can add so many other things, but I like to keep things simple because, I mean, if, if, if this is not a chemistry class, if things get too complicated, you're less likely to do it and you're less likely to do it well. And like I said, this is all I use and that's what my plants look like. They're really healthy. So I think, at least in my practice, I think there's no need to overcomplicate things you know, keeping it basic works, works really well for me. The other thing that you probably need in your semi-hydro practice is, of course, you need to measure your pH. So you've got your, you know, you've, I've got my pH measuring thingy here. I've got my pH up and I've got my pH down. I'll talk a little bit about this. So um, when you're growing plants in a semi-hydroponic setup, the optimal really is a pH of 5.5 to about 6.5. And this is where the plant can readily absorb the nutrients that are in the nutrient solution. And when I say pH, I'm talking about the pH of the nutrient solution here, the nutrient solution that's going to sit in the cash pot. So when you've got your foliage focus over here, I mix that with water. So that's five mils per liter. I'll mix that, okay? And then I will check the pH. So I will put a little bit of solution in my tester there and I'll check the pH. And I want it to fall between, oh, I've got my pH meter there. So I want it to look like that, you know? So between 5.5 and 6 is what I want it to look like. There's all sorts of different kind of pH meters. You can get electronic ones, all sorts of things. But this works fine for me. Because if your pH is too high or too low, then the plants are not able to absorb the nutrients that are within your nutrient solution and your plant will not do very well. And in the long term, your plant will die. So you really want to maintain that pH. But I'll tell you something about pH, okay? I hardly ever check the pH of my solution. So I'm not getting my container mixing my solution and checking my pH as something I do on a regular basis, I do not. And that's be also because I use, I use tap water as well. That's something we'll discuss pH and tap water and all those things in later videos. But I use my tap water. The tap water is pretty consistent. And when I first started using semi-hydroponics, I was consistently checking my pH. I was constantly checking my pH. Every time I made up a batch of nutrient solution, I will check my pH 
it was consistently the same. It was consistently fine. I have never needed to up my pH or down my pH. I've never used the pH up or the pH down. The pH of the water in the suburb that I used to live in in Melbourne was perfect. I would just mix my nutrient solution and away I go. So I stopped. What's the point of measuring something when I know it's fine? My plants are fine. So I stopped doing that. I moved house and I went to a different suburb. And the first thing I did when I made my nutrient solution was check the pH. I needed to make sure that I was still okay to not be checking my pH. I checked my pH, pH was fine. So do I check my pH consistently every time? No, I do not. And my plants are happy. So again, there's no point in making an added step. There's no point in complicating something if you don't need to do it. So it's good to have a pH tester. You need to have it if you're doing anything with semi-hydroponics, but it's not something you need to become a slave to. Next thing that you need, obviously, is things to help you measure. So these are little measurers. So I've got this one is from 10 mils to 50 mils. And this one is from one mil to five mils. I've got another one that goes up to, I think, is that 50? Hang on. That's 250 mils. All that will just help you measure your solutions because it's pretty precise. You know, this is five mils per litre. This is five mils per litre. We are not estimating people here. These are, you know, um, nutrients that have been properly manufactured and calibrated and you don't want to be putting too much otherwise you will burn your plants and your plants will die so you know all you need is something to help you measure and that's it that's all you need to do and you're done and other things that i use in my practice for semi-hydroponics of course is plant labels because you know everybody needs a name and it's really good to call people but well people to call plants by their right names and especially when you've got many plants, it's easy to forget or it's easy to mix plants up. So I like to label my plant and put that in my pot and away I go. So yes, um, these are really the things you kind of need to get going in semi-hydroponics. You don't need much. It's not as complicated as people make it out to be. I was really scared to try it. It took me a very long time to dip my foot into it. And once I did it, I realized it's not as hard as people think. So come on, give it a try. You know, you don't have to buy 2 million items to get going. Give it a try, see how you go. You might find that you like it. So I will be adding on to this series and we'll be talking, um, going into detail about, you know, the lecker itself, what you do to prepare the liquor, how you reuse it, things like that. We'll be going into great detail about the nutrients, how I mix my nutrients, how I check my pH, and so on. I'll go into great detail into how I transfer my plants, when I use what nutrient solution, what do I do when the roots are overgrown, all those kinds of things. How do I put my plants in liquor on a moss pole? How do I water them? There's just so, so much to talk about, and I'm so excited to share it all with you guys. So please stay on this series with me, and we will make it fun. If you've got anything that you think I need to touch on in this series, please put that in the comments below, and I'll be very happy to look at that, and I will put that in. So yes, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. Please share, like, subscribe, press the notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.